And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer to the temple. He is one half of the two-headed monster known as Animal Studios. Creators of the upcoming The Way of Wrath, which I believe is going to have a beta in a few days. Yep. The one and we, the one and only, and I know I'm going to fuck this up in, in advance. Dato Kiknavadze. Something like this. Hello, hey. hello. <laughs> hey, I, I said I was going to screw it up, so you can't call me a liar. <laughs> it, it was perfect, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. Hello, hello, and thank you very much for inviting us, mm -hmm. inviting me. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, I like to open with the humble beginnings, as it were, as it were. With that, with that in mind, what was your in, what was your introduction to gaming, um, and where, and more specifically, the idea of doing game design? Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, everything uh, started from the. Very, very, very early childhood, you know, mm -hmm. when uh, I was uh, playing really old games like, uh, oh my god, it was uh, Warcraft 2, <laughs> then mm -hmm. it was, then was uh, Tomb Raiders, then was uh, some Resident Evils, some uh, old school stuff, and also a lot of, lot of RPGs like Gothic uh, and a lot of them. So, you know... Uh, this all I really uh, some kind of old uh, old school game gamer, and I really love the games which uh, which has its unique atmosphere. You know, you even can uh, just put aside the uh, controller, uh, and you know you are there, and you uh, the whole game is around you, and you are not ju doing just task making thing what what is in uh, in uh, next generation games you know a lot of uh, game designs changed and you know you're doing task making and stuff so in all games there was really uh, much uh, freedom and so on especially in rpgs mm -hmm. so you know uh, uh, my love starts very early uh, with uh, games and i on every uh, stage of the of my uh, uh growing up so i was thinking uh, to uh get somehow involved in game design uh game making also animation production and uh when i grew up and uh, all this started thinking what to do in <laughs> real life and what 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 to make uh so uh parents helped me to like you know just do what you love and follow your path. You know, it was uh, 80s in Georgia and uh, 80s was a really tough uh, uh, time for Georgia because there was a war and so on and so on. And yeah, you know, when you're saying that you want to be an uh, art director for uh, video games and animation, it sounds like not a little bit crazy, but totally crazy. But you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, time changed and internet appeared and everything uh, uh, became uh, close. And yeah, you know, uh, internet, internet is huge power when, especially when you live uh, outside, uh, outside places of the uh, industries of animation and game gaming and entertainment stuff so yeah, yeah you know uh, it has like a everyday basis i was my friend and my colleague sandro mm -hmm. were trying to build something together you know we started from small games you know then i worked uh, for like uh, big studios as well mm -hmm. like disney microsoft ubisoft uh, sandro as well worked for Big companies, and um, you know speak, something. Speaking of which, um, speak speak of the devil. I see, I see that notification up there. Let me get him in here. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> hey guys, 
Hey, hey there, man. Hey there, man. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can. Yep. Cool. Nice so, to meet you. Man. I'm telling our story how we started uh, with game development and where our love to the game source mm -hmm. started. Cool. So you, you, can, you can jump in and, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so tell your story, I yeah. know. <laughs> About game development, uh, oh, okay. For game development, for me, began uh, with Elder Scrolls Three: Morrowind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I used to play that game when I didn't have internet yet. Like I would go to like my father's workplace and I would mm -hmm. download all the tutorials and stuff for this uh, construction kit that comes with Elder Scrolls Online, and mm -hmm. I would come and build kind of like different uh, modes for it. And I always started really, really big. Like my the first mod that I started was the size of like probably all the Morrowind DLC combined, and I actually build up all the uh, levels and stuff. But uh, of course, I got stuck on the quests and stuff like that, like building that huge of a game. And uh, yeah, I guess then I transitioned into like early um, uh, the game engines like Bleach 3D, Dark Basic stuff like that. Until eventually, I found like Unreal Engine, Unity, and began working uh, on like studios and uh, personal projects. Mm -hmm. Now, with now f going further on f um, from that, um, talk to me about th about the early conceptualization of the Way of Wrath. So you know. Uh... Uh, when you start developing the uh, game, you know, uh, you starting from very small thing, and usually it becomes very big thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it happens usually. So, you know, we started with totally different. Uh, we were starting with a visual novel, actually, this story, you know, and uh, uh, I mean, uh, not uh, the way of us. We were start, uh, you know, uh, we wanted to make uh, some. A fictional setup with a uh, very uh, undeveloped society, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we came uh, came up to this idea, you know, where everything was ju just started. You know, there there were not empire, no empires or uh, well uh, developed societies, and you are part of developing these empires, societies, and you know, uh, we wanted to be. Uh, part of uh, when uh, this um, like society the players, yeah you the can players to become part of the uh, progress of the game because you know in games like usually when you go when the developer or the author lets you join the world there's always like huge uh, empires that fell and then empires fell on top of those and mm -hmm. like there's like huge lore that uh, and you feel like uh, when you're joining this world like everything cool has already happened in the past and you're just like an archaeologist or lore keeper who uncovers these ancient secrets and we wanted to kind of change that formula and let the player be the first explorer who like goes to a new yeah. continent and discovers it be the f uh, first uh, doctor who discovers like how to work human body or be the first cartographer you actually in our game meet the first person who mm -hmm. in this region uh, starts w working on the maps and you help him out like build the for first map of the region and stuff like that to really be in this like uh, setting where you are uh, part of the foundational events of the setting and you uh, you forge forge ahead with that yeah. that kind of fail um and yeah, I guess uh, for us, uh, when we are playing with this idea, we tried first to make, uh, like Dato said, the visual novel kind of game. We had like very cool character for it, uh, female lead actually. Uh, and uh, uh, but then uh, when we actually analyzed like the market and stuff like that, we decided that it would not be easy to start with visual novel for us to achieve what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had this idea that. Um, it would be cool for you to have a setting where uh, you lead a small number of units, you are in a very terrible, uh, dire situation, and you have to survive this like hellish siege with these uh, people. And over the course of the game, you get to know these people, they become like your brothers, your sisters, and you really experience this monumental, uh, uh, it, monumental uh, challenge with them go through this uh, siege and from there we built on like this combined these two ideas and built on this setting where you are in this like early uh, bronze age uh, 
prehistoric kind of setting where mm -hmm. your your faction has lost this in this terrible war you're fleeing and uh you're stuck in the old ruined fort and uh the enemies on your trail and you you have to like uh team up with these people you have to rebuild defenses you have to gain their trust and really come together as a unit and fight off this giant uh, epic siege and all so all, all the course of this uh, uh like the story you you'll be facing not only the uh, environment and not only the um enemies but also the um i mean not only the enemies but also the environment like the simple things like going across the uh frozen lake can become an adventure because when you step on the frozen lake it might break and you might fall so you, might, you have to figure out okay how do i cross this terrain uh, in the uh, we have like kind of like icelandic terrain so we have mm -hmm. volcanic marshes they present a lot of challenges avalanches can happen they can take you so you're really left alone uh, to survive with like your uh, people and your team against the nature against mm -hmm. enemies and yeah this kind of experience yeah um hold Hold that thought for one moment. Sure. So that that does bring that does bring me to um, you mentioned you mentioned a very you mentioned a very ice, ice icy approach. Um, what was the inspiration for going with this um, very tundra centric environment for the Way of Wrath? That's yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess uh, partly uh, we were really into both Dato and I into Vikings TV series. So mm -hmm. we really liked that uh, Vikings theme, Viking atmosphere. And then we thought about more about this and uh, actually started researching the cold climate, cold uh, settings. And then we decided to want to go further, more into Arctic approach. And then we started uh, really um, in, in depth uh, research into Inuit people and different cultures that live in a cold, cold settings. And we decided it would be really, really cool and different uh, setting to explore in, in this yeah. in this as nomadic tribe situation, mm -hmm. because we wanted to start with really nomadic, hard, uh, warrior, uh, warrior type of tribe uh, for the setting. And uh, over the course of like the universe, you would, uh, with this uh, barbaric, barbarous uh, tribe, you would uh, later become a settled society and you later would advance into different civilizations. But we wanted this raw primal start and we thought that, okay, uh, for these people to be like that, like to realistically be uh, tough and gritty and uh, like uh, unstoppable, they would need to live in a harsh and uh, to hard landscape. and. Uh, after we examined like different types of scenarios like the desert the steppes and stuff like that mm -hmm. we saw that uh most appealing for us was this full full-on cold winter setting uh i guess yeah that, that is the broad strokes yeah now from what i from what i saw with the with some with some of the footage i was able to get access to for the way for the way of wrath would it it seems you guys are go. It seems you guys are going for a for a more um, turn-based approach, a, a la old school CRPGs, or in more recent cases, um, Divinity. Um, yes. Yep. I know. I've. You mentioned earlier about about small things, um, developing into big things. Was, was the given given some of your inspirations in the past. Was the intent always to go with that to go with that sort of um, skir turn based skirmish style? Uh, sure. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the the why we wanted to do the turn based combat was that mm -hmm. we wanted to have uh, a really tactical uh, a low. We wanted to have a really intimate setting where each character that you meet, even the players. The allies, the enemies uh, are like unique characters. They are not like bot one, bot two, or like warrior one, warrior two. Each each one has their own history. And I can go into detail later, I guess. We have a whole different system about how we handle the mm -hmm. storytelling for each character and stuff like that. But because of this, because we wanted each uh, character, each faction to feel, uh, to have weight and personality behind it, we knew that we could not have player fighting hundreds of people and also because we had this siege style uh, survival uh, themes 
Mm -hmm. uh, the turn based kind of comes into like a perfect system for this, where you you can have a really dynamic and challenging and interesting scenario, but you don't need uh, for player to kill like hundred people in two seconds uh, on screen and stuff like that. So it really fit into both tactical survival aspect and the fact that we did not want player to just slaughter hosts of enemies uh, and go for enemies to have personality and wait behind them. Yeah. But yeah, we, we always wanted to go with this because of that. Now, would you say... I realize that people have a very... That um, for the longest time, people had a very limited under, understanding or perception when it came to um, fantasy. But would it be fair to yeah. say that the Way of Raft leans more in the realm of swords and sorcery? No, I guess uh, it's really hard to talk about the, our setting because mm -hmm. um, it's neither fantasy nor historical. It's something in between, yeah. like yeah. alternative, alternative historical. Yeah, something like that. We mm -hmm. um, there are no outright like big magical spells you can cast and stuff like that. But we yeah. um, we cannot sh tell. Like it would be a spoiler, I guess, to tell exactly what kind of supernatural mm -hmm. is or is not there in this setting uh, but it's uh, certainly more realistic and uh, we wanted to give a player the feeling of what it would be like to live on earth if you were an ancient human or and you didn't have all this information about uh, the world that we have now how strange and different and mm -hmm. scary place the earth would be and how all these things we take for like lore and uh, uh, mythology and stuff like that would be very real to the people living in them. And so we want to put you in that position. If someone yeah. tells you, like, you have to kill your friend, sacrifice it to save your tribe near this tree, okay, do I have to or do I not? Is this real or not in the setting? And we always want to for you to question this kind of mm -hmm. things and to really relieve that kind of feeling. So, yeah. yeah. And for what it's worth, when I mentioned... Um... When I mentioned sword and sorcery, what the kind the kind of approach that I'm referring to is the likes of say Conan or um, Cull. Yeah, I guess uh, in in that sense, yes, uh, mm -hmm. it would be similar to that in atmosphere, yeah. but also combined with like, for example, Viking TV series mm -hmm. kind of exploration yeah. and. And, well, there's a, there's already there's already a very strong precedent because well. I'm a sucker for folk metal as much as as much as anybody. I've seen I've yeah. um Great. when Twier all the all the, who is from the Faroe Islands came, came to the states. I saw I saw them play both mm -hmm. times. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. And Great. given the fact that you're going that you're going with um bron that you're going with Bronze Age, mm -hmm. or or at least or at least in that general area. Yeah. Would it be fair of me to assume that metalwork and me and metal equipment is uncommon? Yep. Yeah. So metal is very very rare in our game. So mm -hmm. metal development is not very well developed. Yes. Uh, yet, and you know, there's only few uh, places on the map where you can get uh, the metal. It's very hard to get, and you know, uh, during a whole ga game, you may uh, may have a, a couple of, uh, I mean, real metal weapons like uh, iron stuff and a couple details for the armor. But mm -hmm. uh, it's super rare in our setting. You know. Uh, during development of the whole chain of uh, 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 games, like uh, in the universe of the way of us, you know, we want to develop this uh, metal production industry. <coughs> Sorry, Sandra, please continue. Yeah, and how 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 it uh, uh, and how, yeah how how uh, it affects, for example, when a metallurgy becomes uh, common for some faction in the future like this will have a massive impact on the whole universe and the setting because they will be able to dominate like all the nearby tribes for uh, the time for the time period that they will have this uh, metal uh, yeah uh, they, they will be only ones to have this metal approach but for now in the game you will be fighting with basically all the things you can find in nature you will take sticks and put uh, uh, bones on them and 
put obsidian pieces and the stuff like that and you'll be you'll be crafting different kind of makeshift weapons uh, but uh, realistic style and you'll be fighting with basically everything you can find and if you find a metal sword you'll be like it will be like a giant glowing artifact that you mm -hmm. got it it will be very rare yeah um now unless i'm mistaken you you i think you've hinted at one of the one of the main thing one of the um main features that you're shooting for is the is your base um yes so would would it be fair of me to say that it's a case where you're where you're gonna you're gonna acquire some sort of base camp or its equivalent early on and um build and maintain that uh yes so uh, the y your base is an ancient fort that is uh almost ruined and indefensible and uh, there's gonna be a giant wave of enemies mm -hmm. coming at you in you don't know how many days but you have a few days to prepare so in this camp you uh, you uh, your allies come and uh, you and your allies try to prepare for this huge uh, epic siege and uh, you'll be able to place traps uh, strategize what buildings to rebuild uh, also your uh, the, there's is a whole system of uh, uh, morale and uh, you judging your own people, you passing mm -hmm. laws. So you're you're full on leader that has to maintain like this um, community community together and uh, lift their spirits and prepare them for uh, the fight ahead. And you will have full freedom to choose. Like, do you want to be like dictator and rule with iron fist, or do you want to be like more diplomatic and stuff like that? But yeah, you you will have this uh, host of features to maintain your base, rebuild it, and really make this your home and uh, become prepared for this massive siege that you are about to face. Yeah. And when it, com when it comes to that coming siege, is it a, is it a case where um, you'll... Is it a case where, it'll t where the game would tell you a range of how many days you have left, or is it going to tell you specifically how many days you have left? You will not know how many days you have left, and uh, based on your actions uh, during the course of the game, you'll uh, you may the siege might come sooner or it might come later mm -hmm. uh, based on your actions. So, and even during the siege, based on how you did, you'll be able to delay like cert like there are sections in the fort, so you might delay like enemy on like section one of the fort, so you have more time to prepare and plan. Uh, like next stages of the siege. Um, yeah, I guess like if you want like one aspect of the game that is unique to us uh, or more or less integral to the system is that we have a day mechanic, sort of day mechanics. I can tell about this now or if you want like yeah. later, I could. How do you prefer? Um, I. It kind of ties the whole game together. This. System. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Go. Go into it. Go into it now because we'll because I'll be we'll be able to build on that. Okay, sure. So this is how our mechanic works: is that mm -hmm. uh, each day is like a story chapter in a game. Game days. And, yeah, in game days that you spend in the game. So you wake up in your fort, you go out into the world, you do as much as you can uh, to prepare for the siege. When you uh, when the when you become too wounded and too tired to continue, like where game starts, you have to return to the fort. You have to like sleep, and then you wake up refreshed. So th this is like basic cycle that happens. And mm -hmm. uh, in com in uh, conjunction with this, we have a system where each uh, character or a group of characters has their own storyline spread across these days, and they have. Uh, their own personal goals that these characters have to achieve based on uh, their personality and their uh, background. And each day they will try to achieve this goal, like get closer to it. And depending on what you did in the previous day, what will happen to them on the next day, what they will try the next day changes. So uh, basically the, each day of the game, uh, the whole map gets updated with the content. The factions move around, uh, they attack each other, they attack you, you take uh, the uh, structures from enemies, you sabotage enemies, and then you see outcomes build up on each other each day of the game until you build up to this final siege. So it's kind of not a branching story, but uh, I don't know what we, we have not found a name for our storytelling system yet, but it's, uh, it's, it's very dynamic and based on player choice and 
because one thing we want to do with player choice is that we didn't want to give you just like 1700 endings that don't affect you beyond seeing like a slideshow. We wanted to really make you feel each action that you did during the course of the game. So mm -hmm. this is one way we uh, um, we made it happen with this uh, giving each character uh, their own storyline. For example, if you kill one character, then this might unlock a storyline for another character where they have to deal with the loss of their like loved one. So uh, maybe they will go into re uh, revenge. They want to self-destructive pass. They will run into enemy camp and just kill everyone they can and then die. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll be able to like uh, calm them down and uh, let them go through the grief process and they become stronger for it. Maybe someone will take the place of the dying character and become a better leader. So. We don't want anything that happens in the game, like days of the character, even days of your companions or characters, to be the end of the story. So, mm -hmm. if something happened, then some something new will take its place. So, kind of everything you do, like base building, uh, questing, uh, research, uh, crafting, is based on uh, this day mechanic. So, everything takes a certain amount of time, and each day what you did the previous day will determine how successful you are the next day. So, it's mm -hmm. like central. To the whole concept. Yeah. Now, I want to shift into into um, combat a bit. Now, sure. From what I from what I had seen, it looked like you guys were using a action point based system with the turn with the um, turn based affair. Um, uh, yes. Now in now within within that, are you aiming for a? What what sort of scaling are you aiming for as far as the lethality of it? Are you are we going to be dealing with instances where um, PCs can go PCs can go down in a few hits, or are you aiming for something a little a little more forgiving? No, it will be very lethal. Very mm -hmm. um, yeah, we want to each action to feel really important, each uh, strike to feel dangerous and lethal. So that. Uh, the uh, enemies will not have, and you won't have giant uh, pools where you just hit. Uh, you can hit like ten or take ten or fifteen hits or something like that. Mm -hmm. You will go down in two, maybe five hits, depending on your armor, and you really have to make each action count because this is kind of part of the desperate uh, setting and the story that you have to go through. And even when you take wounds in the game, some wounds may take like days to heal. So. Uh, and we were in a world where you have to figure out, like, is this folk medicine are actually going to help me or harm me and stuff like that. So it won't, it will be very tied to the story. So even if you take mm -hmm. a wound, it will be part of your story and experience. But, yeah, the combat will be very little and yeah. dangerous. Now, fo um, following, fr following from that, I think it was mentioned that you that – you guys weren't going to be using a traditional skill system for um, the op for the options that characters have. How is that? How is that going to work out? Uh, could you tell me about? I couldn't understand about the skills. What you meant? Um, what I'm cur what I'm curious about is how, is the is um because I think it, I think it was mentioned er early on that you. Early on, with in my research, that um, skill trees were going to be a little bit more open than they may than they may be in other instances. Oh, uh, yeah, you. It's similar to, I guess, Divinity game where you can mm -hmm. choose any skill combination that you like. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we changed recently was that instead of having uh, attributes like strength, uh, dexterity, and stuff like that being in numeric format, mm -hmm. we decided to make them into skill trees. So you have finer control of uh, exactly what kind of stat do you want to get out of it. So do you want more health or do you want more resistance to certain uh, like uh, hazards? And with strengths, like do you want to have more damage or be able to like wear heavier armor and stuff like that to give you just more finer control uh, over over that, yeah. Uh, but there, there will be no classes or restrictions on what you can be, even if it's like ridiculous uh, in terms of the setting or a story, we want to give you option to do it. Like, of course you can choose to be more immersive and like, for example, don't choose a shaman skills on a warrior background character, yeah. but it's up to you. Like if you want yeah. to break that immersion, 
like go for it. Yeah. Now, with the now, I know you get, I know you guys are setting up for a beta in a few days, and one of the clips that I saw most recently on your social media seemed to have a um a set of archetypes or. or I hesitate yeah. to use the word classes because that has its own connotations. Archetypes, yeah. Character builds archetypes is yeah. good. Um, what would be a few examples of those, and and how is how is this archetype system going to work within the game's um, sandbox? Uh, sure. Uh, this is specifically for. Uh, I guess yeah. We use both both in character creation and the. Uh, the way that this works is that uh, when starting a arena match, you you'll be uh, arena match will not be like story mode. Story mode is separate game mode. This is game mode where you pick four characters and you fight uh, in different lengths mm -hmm. of arena matches. So you can say select five game match, fifteen game, and stuff like that. And uh, because of the reusable kind of uh, gameplay that this has, like you have to restart each arena match uh, from the mm -hmm. start of the game. We want to give players ability to have a preset characters that they can quickly choose to play their arena match or create their own preset characters for their own arena match. So this mm -hmm. is all, all they serve. Like, how uh, this is your starting character build, what skills they have, what appearance they have, what backgrounds they have. This is just like level one skill distribution. And then you can uh, modify them or build them as you advance in levels how, however you want. This is more like to give player the idea of Okay, this is the kind of builds that are possible, but you can uh, uh, possible and uh, based on like developer feedback. But you can also ignore those builds and build whatever whatever you want. And yeah. we also one thing that we want to add like new mechanic is that you'll be able to uh, create like a build link similar to how Hearthstone uh, deck build works, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to export this link and share like uh, your build with your friends. And if someone doesn't care to like learn all the builds and they just want a good good build, they could load this this up and just have the game auto level them based on like build they downloaded over internet. Yeah. So we want to make conf character creation and leveling up more comfortable and like reusable. Yeah. With this kind of system. Now. When it comes to when it comes to character abilities, is it strictly based on cooldown, or do you guys have a, um, or is it tied to action points? Both. Uh, uh, each skills cost action points, but mm -hmm. when you use a skill, uh, they might be like two or one turn delay on those skills because before you can reuse it again. Mm -hmm. Now. When it comes to when it comes now, when it comes to the um up when it comes to the upcoming beta, is that is the main purpose of that to test how people react to the um, combat system, or do you have some narrative elements that you guys are going to be working on? Uh, this uh, beta is mostly focused mm -hmm. on combat and mm -hmm. to get uh, like. To get the feel the feed, uh, and feedback system of the mm -hmm. combat uh, done to see how people like skills and systems, but later the same arena mode will have uh, might have actually uh, the story kind of story its own story mode where you relieve the events of the game's prequel story, like the Ten Year War, your factions fought in. Mm -hmm. So you'll have kind of like um, so short uh, narrative element, then a battle, then another battle. So you relieve the important battles in the history of this 10, 10 year war. Yeah. Uh, but for now, it will be just for combat, uh, combat version of it. Mm -hmm. And with that, and uh, with that, with that in mind, um, shi shifting to what you mentioned about um, changing how attributes are going to work. Sure. One thing I'm one thing I'm curious about is how that's going to relate to equipment, because with a lot of um, CRPGs, you have it where um, you need you need certain parameters or you need to be a certain archetype in order to use um, given equi given equipment. So uh, give there will not be any restrictions on what you can take in hand and fight with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no no restrictions on that. Like, pick what you want. So I'm, ge I'm guessing I'm guessing the only restrictions is just w is just what you're actually able to carry without dealing with encumbrance. 
No, even even with you, your armor, you might uh, mm -hmm. you might you were actual armor is one thing that we are testing the approach because we have two three or four approaches that we are uh, switching back and forth uh, between. One is that when you wear an armor, if you wear a heavier armor, it will limit your action points. For mm -hmm. example, with heavy armor, you might have a total of eight action points. With uh, light armor, you might have 12 action points, stuff like that. Another approach is that we, um, with different armors, we change, um, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we change what kind of, uh, protection do you get out of it uh but so it won't be like heavy medium rare armor but it, it will be like this armor is better against blunt weapons this armor is better against piercing weapons so based on who you play as you might uh choose like armor that's best against like ranged attacks or melee attacks mm -hmm. stuff like that and we are kind of playing around with that but it also might be that uh, we'll go for approach similar to to gothic games uh where uh, armor is just like if you get better armor it's harder to get better armor, but if you get better armor, it's just better, and there's no um, differentiation between light and heavy armor. Like we have to see what kind of works for our game and ha get the player's feedback on that. Yeah. Now, when it comes now, some t um, one of the things that often in that can often be tricky to balance, in my in my experience. Sure. Is the relationship between me between melee and missile weapons? Um, because yeah. uh, there's been there's been plenty of instances where, um, one of them ends up getting more favor than the other. Um, yeah. how have, how have you guys um attempted to tackle that to make sure that one doesn't become too useful comparatively speaking? Uh, the way we want to, yeah, uh, uh, because uh, uh, we want to build uh, the skills so they uh, they create cross, uh, I don't know the class, but cross discipline uh, combos that mm -hmm. you can use based on what weapons you carry. So if you carry only one type of weapon, you will have access to like one type of abilities. And it will not be as useful as, let's say, if you could. Uh, go with a warrior uh, and uh, um, uh, stun an enemy, and then when enemy is stunned, you it's easier to shoot a critical arrow at him and stuff like that. So we want to create a uh, synergy between types of skills you use. So a varied party is more advantageous for you to have than uh, just one party because mm -hmm. they will on, they will not be able to use those very uh, powerful cross discipline abilities. Yeah. So uh, combo combo. Given given that, would you say that would you say that this is a system that favors ha, that um I won't say fa but that disfavors I should say having ca having characters that are ostensibly ostensibly one note as if they were as if they were classes in other games. Uh, not uh, oh so if you build uh, uh, enemies based on archetypes, that's what you mean. Like, yeah, if you if, if you, you were like, if you were building if you were building a um a a, a the kind of melee only character that you might build in in a tra in a more traditional game, your your um you you might no, you, you might be you missing be out. Punished for it, mm -hmm. or it's it's perfectly acceptable mm -hmm. way to play play the yeah. game to have uh, the tank character and the D uh, range of DPS character mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I mean more that if you build same type of like five tanks or five damagers or stuff like that, it will it with the same kind of weapon, it will not be as effective as if you take uh, uh, like one character with an axe or blunt weapon, one character with a sword, one with a bow and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, also uh, w one other thing that you you will be um, that will be a factor is that weapons break in the game and equipment breaks so mm -hmm. uh for example if you only build uh, like uh, hammers you might run out of materials that you need to build out hammers and just won't be able to find good hammers to equip like whole party so it kind of game naturally favors gives the advantage mm -hmm. to having like varied party but yeah uh, I guess uh, also what happens in the game is that based on your playthrough and based on your choices, uh, you'll be able to unlock perks, uh, like a talent points, mm -hmm. perk points, like in Fallout games and stuff like that. We decided to, instead of giving player 
ability to select them at level ups to spread them across the gameplay and those for them to be like uh, things that you can find and unlock based on your feats, the characters, you can learn them from characters. So based on your playthrough, you will get the um, different kind of modifiers uh, on those perks. So this will naturally give you like uh, different options for you to play with. So you, you, your characters will kind of evolve based on what uh, paths they took through the game, based on like this is kind of experience that you want, that you tried to adapt to the world and become like a warrior that is suited to the, to that world uh, because the world will challenge you both like the enemies and the systems and the environment will challenge you and you will have to take that into account mm -hmm. uh, based on uh, yeah when you learn and uh, go against this world yeah now I meant I mentioned the uh, going into shifting into the um, into the into the fortress part of part of the um, sandbox sure when it comes to the when it comes when it comes to maintaining that that particular um base is there some is there some equivalent to a um, tech tree oh um not as such i guess like but yeah, in some points, yes, you'll be able to, for example, if you upgrade your forge, mm -hmm. you'll be able to build like better weapons and equip your yeah. uh, allies with be better weapons. But uh, not like if, if, for example, you build a tower, your all your enemies will not get like 10% uh, more damage or stuff mm -hmm. like that. We, we want to keep it more realistic and keep the things that you build based on the needs that... Uh, arise from the gameplay and the setting uh, of the world so you're you're as likely to need uh, a, a, for example a place for people to sleep and not mm -hmm. freeze to death as you're likely to need like a tower or stuff like that so yeah it, it's not like it's not ga as much gamified as it's more immersive and uh, leaning on realism yeah and w you mentioned um you mentioned cert certain wounds earlier yeah. So, when it comes to when it comes to that, I'm cu I'm curious if it if it's a case where, um, where there's get where there's the possibility of, of, damage that's easily recoverable, i.e., scratch damage and damage that's a bit more serious. How is how is that kind of thing being uh, going to be calculated? Uh, yeah. F w when you fight and you like sustain a critical, real critical attack, or if your companion falls mm -hmm. during the battle, you might sustain a wound and some wounds, uh, as you said, may be easy to, or even in environment, you might sustain certain disease or a wound, or and uh, some of them are easy to fix, but others might uh, take like a whole stages to mm -hmm. fix, uh, different procedures that you, might, you must perform, like cleaning your wound, finding salve that you must apply to your wound and uh, they gradually get better, and some might leave you with tem uh, um, tem uh, not temporary, but uh, permanent uh, scarring. For example, like if you break your bones, uh, you'll be able to like place a splinter on your bone and kind of uh, mitigate that. But you will also have pains, like uh, a status called pain, uh, because of this. So you might have to go each morning and find like a uh, hot spring uh, pool, and mm -hmm. you have you have to relax there a little bit to for your wound to your uh, leg wound to recover, and then the status effect disappears. So you now have a routine where you're like uh, this wound that you receive forces you to take a bath each day. Uh, so it's kind of mixed with immersion, like even uh, mm -hmm. like stuff like building, uh, rebuilding a building. It's not just like you select option you select a worker and it automatically gets done you might find that you told like the character a to build a fence for example mm -hmm. and because of poor discipline you might find him drunk and passed out like <laughs> near the fence so everything has a is tied to kind of story and experience so yeah we tried to like not have game be too mechanical and to sort of tie story, immersion, and mechanisms together to create, like, a more immersive experience. Mm -hmm. And when it comes... When it comes... Now... When it comes to... it, When it comes to um, advancement, 
I know I've, I know I mentioned this a bit a bit ago, but I want but I want to sure. go on one. Go on like one leveling up. Or... Yeah. Is it is it going to be a straight XP to leveling um, approach, or is it is it going to be more uh, of a currency affair? Uh, no, uh, for now we're going with the option of when you gain a level uh, based on your experience, mm -hmm. uh, you will get certain points to spend in attribute trees, in combat tree, and in exploration tree. And uh, yeah, mm, but we might try as an experiment to go with currency where you spend. But uh, the problem with currency that we want to avoid in this game is that we don't want for you to hoard the experience and then later think of like what. Uh, uh, for the experience and miss the whole game uh, because you did you, you saw that you might need the skill points for some huge check down down the line mm -hmm. want uh, for you to be able to spend your experience and points as soon as you get them and be confident that you can like kind of uh, if you can't find this uh, go through this path you you will have other paths open to you yeah. so uh, in that regard the currency is more dangerous for players to fall into habit of like just hoarding it and trying to go with minimal skills and just missing whole, whole game fun and skills because of it. Yeah. Um, and in that regard, when it comes to the whole getting points to spend on trees, those, those um, trees that you mentioned, would those, be, would those be given separate points or is it all under the same pool? No, separate points. You have three kind of uh, categories, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. One is for your attributes, uh, one is for combat, and one is for exploration. And in exploration, you have stuff like crafting, uh, hunting, survival, medicine, and uh, stuff like that, yeah. So we don't want you to like feel like, OK, if I spend points in the hunting or survival, then I might lose in combat later. So kind of have, have a peace of mind that I can this is the uh, my allotment for combat, mm -hmm. and I can focus on those on combat, and I can focus this on uh, survival and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, when it, but then again, or, everything is open to player feedback, and we we might change. change yeah, that, this. yeah. Obviously, everything that I'm saying here is 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 with the implicit take take it yeah, take yeah, it sure. with a take it with the kind of grain of salt you'd put on the side of a donkey as you're carrying it out of the salt mines. <laughs> um, so, but one th one thing that I'm curious about from both a both both a lo both a lore and gameplay um, perspective is on on your guys's website it mentions performing rituals. Um, yes. <laughs> like how how is that how is that going to how is that going to work out on bo on both ends now. Obviously, I understand that when it comes to the story part of it, you guys are a bit—you guys are currently um, cagey on the details of of that. But yeah. what can you tell me about written about rituals narratively and gameplay-wise? They play a huge role in the kind of understanding and uh, the so the society of the faction that you mm -hmm. play. Uh, the uh, you play as a faction called Thane, and they are very superstitious, very uh like for example like they could see an om your companions could see an omen in a bird landing on a dead uh, animal and mm -hmm. they might refuse to fight in this battle so you have to convince them to fight in this battle so in terms of that rituals play a huge role shamans play a huge role in society and you will actually be able to perform or uh guide the rituals in the game to achieve results in uh like uh, the story, the player morale, the power dynamics you have against like uh, shamans and other uh, characters that uh, kind of why against you, that are against you or with you, but against you also against you mm -hmm. in this power the dynamics. So, but we want to you to be, to be able to recreate these rituals uh, like each step of the way to have really immersion and uh, uh, yeah. So they will be very mechanic, mm -hmm. mechanically uh, in depth. You'll be able to perform each step of the ritual. Uh, if you if you have a shaman character and uh, you sometimes as a, as a leader you might want to uh, uh, not allow players to, uh, other characters to perform a ritual because that's against your own plans. And then you'll have to kind of work work through the community to get get them your own way. But Rituals play a huge role on the morale of the people. They might destroy the morale of your 
whole uh, community or they can raise this morale and you have to be very careful and very uh, apprehensive of what you do with this ritual. So they, they play a huge role and they are also very immersive and step by step. You might have be actually one of the things that might happen in the game uh, in narratively is that people might assume that you have a demon mm. or like dark spirit in you and you might be forced to uh, like for for a uh, exorcism ritual to be performed on you. So you might have to agree on this, that they will take you and they will perform this ritual and exorcise demons from you. And it just might be that they don't agree with your point of view. And like if you take a too radical point of view from them and yeah, it, it plays a huge role in both society. And we also want this to be a huge event that is very immersive and really uh, cinematically and narratively mm -hmm. really lifts the games up and brings Preller into the immersion. Yeah. Yeah, shamans uh, also are part of the combat system. Yeah, and it's quite a uh, unique appeal, I think. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. With shamans, for example, uh, your origins uh, have a huge impact on gameplay and what you can do. For example, with shaman, one of the shaman characters called Yarboga, it's mm -hmm. like a terror kind of terror shaman, if you can imagine it, uh, is yeah. that enemies uh, will be scared of attacking you first and until you do like a violent action against them. So you basically be able to run around the map and uh, do the dances and debuff on them without them attacking you. And uh, there, there's like this type of unique mechanic we want to add to each origin. For example, with another type of shaman who are more uh, wo sky worshiping shamans who are more about like uh, the core religion of the uh, Thane tribe, you'll be able to tame birds and literally a flock of birds will follow you and as, as you enter locations they will come and land near characters and this will add a lot of mystery and intimidation aspects to uh, and make your place through unique in that way that you have this flock of uh, birds of prey following you and they will land you and they will give you like dialogue options for intimidation and you'll also be able with like high skill to use them in combat mm -hmm. so there's like this whole immersion and uh, on each of the background and personality of your origins yeah now, given given the um, given the kind of setting that you guys are working with, because um, I do want to I do want to tackle the audio end of things. With, there's there a lot of t a, an easy fallback when when whenever um, games are doing a more prehistoric prehistoric or um, or, or ancient um setting yeah, primal you know, setting stuff. is is using a whole is using a fair amount of um drum work i'm with that in mind i'm curious what some what some of the musical cues that you guys have have um have tried have tried to go with for the way of wrath because obviously if in a game that's going to depend so much on its um atmosphere presenting this harsh landscape the mm -hmm. audio part of it is just as important Huge, huge role. That token, like, yeah, it's, uh, actually, the audio and music part uh, mm -hmm. play a huge role uh, because there will be a really unique uh, sounds for shamans uh, as well. And there is a, a quite unique appeal on the music because all the music instruments uh, which will be used uh, making uh, soundtracks will be, you know, uh, instead of using uh, traditional drums, we will make use uh, two woods like dish, 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 beating uh, on each other and uh, not traditional like violin or uh, cello stuff. There will be some uh, folk instruments, uh, throat singing like... Uh, um, Mongolian, uh, Mongolian uh, songs and yeah, <coughs> sorry. So uh, all the uh, all the music and sounds will be done with natural sounds and yeah, uh, uh, natural. Um, uh, you know, um, for example, uh, uh, the, we will use uh, for shaking some bones, some different stuff, you know, the real materials to create this cool atmosphere and music. Some, uh, in some cases, there will be not uh, really music, but atmospherical, uh, huge at atmospherical um, uh, environmental music and stuff. So it's quite... Yeah, it's, yeah, the yeah, idea is that we don't want to use music as much unless it's like battle or yeah. like um, 
narrative scene, but as you explore the world, you'll be mostly listening to, if I guess it's that way to be fair to say, like music made out of uh, natural sounds, basically, yeah. Yeah. kind yes. of like ambient music. Like, and, yeah. like one cool uh, area that we really are excited about is the lake that's the, in front of the, um, uh, in the center of the map. And as you run across the lake, there's actually a really cool effect that sometimes happens on lakes where there's huge like alien type of sounds mm -hmm. that lakes can emit because of shifting uh, ice uh, uh, layers. So yeah, mm -hmm. it will be like, we will try to make, uh, like if you have, um, as, uh, both Dato and I really love camping and staying in forests and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. want to recreate this feeling where as you're alone in the forest, the strange nature sounds really transform you into alien world. And you are almost like imagining like magical beings uh, out there. And yeah, we went to each area that you go through and uh, we handcraft each area basically on the map with that in mind that audio also is a big part of it. What sounds you will hear will be part of this whole experience of being in that place and being transformed in place. And music will be more uh, like traditional kind of music uh, thing will be more for battles and uh, the uh, cinematic scenes and narrative scenes where that it makes no mm -hmm. sense. But when you're running on the field with nature, uh, if you have like, that you can like go into more specifics if you have any questions for that. Yeah. Um, so would would it be fair would it be fair to s when it comes now when it comes to the uh, tones would it would it would it be fair to say that you that you guys are setting up the structure of um day of daytime events and then and then um nighttime resolution oh uh yeah, day and night cycle is actually one one of the the huge elements that we'll be testing in the game. One, uh, yeah, one option that we have is that you have uh, daytime and nighttime separately, and you have to advance to go through that. And another option is that night, uh, the the day begins like early in the morning, and as you play, it naturally goes into a night, and then some things change on the map. So uh but uh yeah but resolutions most can happen uh any time of the day based on the situations that uh, uh transpire in the game the actual um resolution that happens uh, of the quests and the going forward that i mentioned before is actually tied to the next day so it's not like what what you do on in the morning uh, has resolution in the night but it might have a resolution in the next day like you will resolve all the quests the same day but the results of those quests will bear fruit like the next day. So it's like next chapter happened kind of thing when the next day starts. All right, that makes sense. Um, now with all, with all that with all that in mind, I realize that the that you have a release date set for 2020, 2021, but when it comes to the when it comes to the uh, beta that's mentioned, um, what are you shooting for as far as when that's going to go live? Uh, hopefully, like uh, the combat beta, hopefully this month, like at end of this month. It might shift like few days in the next month if we are, uh, yeah, if there are bugs or stuff like that that we need to still fix. But uh, yeah, it, it will be soon, like within like two, three weeks at most, hopefully. Yeah. And with. With that, and I'll definitely be um, keeping keeping an eye out and keeping it and keeping a close in, a close interest in how that how that's going to develop. Um, Thank you. Especially especially awesome. since this is something like the way of wrath is hitting uh, is hitting a lot of my bullet points to get, to <laughs> get the monk's attention all the all the way up here in the temple. Um, We're happy to hear that. Yep. But with that with that in mind. I do want to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell that is time zone management to <laughs> come up all the way to the temple. I, I know it's um, I I I know it's it's a, it's afternoon over here, but it's the, but it's dead of night over there. So I definitely appreciate it. Oh, and thank you very much for this interview. It was really fun and. Mm -hmm. 
it's really nice to be able to speak about your game and uh, mm -hmm. thank you for giving us attention. My, awesome. my pleasure. Um, sure. Anytime you guys see fit to return, the door is always open. As I always say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> awesome. We'll, we'll be happy to take you up on the top. Yeah, um, maybe, ne maybe next time you do it, we'll all, we'll all have bigger beards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe to give it a few years, when one of us will end up getting one of those giant ZZ Top beards or something like that. <laughs> could be. Could be. Um, I'd want. I'd want to do a big. I'd want to do a big dwarven beard. Then go. Then go to a. Um. Then go to a Ren fair and just insult anybody who looks like an elf. Oh, that, that's mandatory. <laughs> it was a beard. Yeah. Um. But but of course, a sincere thanks also goes to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>